The infidel, the infidel Muslim, will Muslims be exposed to hell? According to each belief, there are infidels, which are the other beliefs adheres of course, this is general in all beliefs. On the other hand, each belief guarantees for you that you'll not be considered as an infidel, and that you will not go to hell as long as you stay in this belief, well, not in Islam. Islam is the only religion that confirms previous ones. Islam makes it a must on Muslims to believe in previous scriptures revealed by God, the original ones which have no human interferes, gospel, Torah, Psalms, and papers of Abraham. Muslims might go to hell if they don't believe, so, it's a lack of faith. Also believing in previous prophets and messengers sent by God is a must in Islam. Yes, Muslims believe they'll be exposed to hell. Unlike current beliefs of Christianity and Judaism, Muslims believe that some of them will be exposed to hell with varying degrees, according to their good versus bad deeds. And more importantly according to their faith levels. Some Muslims will definitely fall in hell, some of them might stay for eternity, and some will get out of it after a while. This is for Muslims and for non-Muslims. Only that there's a specific deed that will be a cause of surviving, which is saying no deity except Allah, in Arabic. La ila ella Allah, while having at least an atom of goodness in their hearts, so that would make anyone survive hellfire. Prophet Muhammad said, He who professed, there is no God but Allah, would be brought out of the fire even though he has in his heart virtue equal to the weight of a barley grain. Then he who professed, there is no God but Allah, would come out of the fire even though he has in his heart virtue equal to the weight of a wheat grain. He would then bring out from the fire he who professed, there is no God but Allah, even though he has in his heart virtue equal to the weight of an atom. Reference, Sahih Muslim But who are the infidel Muslims? In Quran there are verses describing some claim med to be Muslims by infidels, those who claim to believe but their hearts don't. Those who claim to be Muslims but their hearts aren't Muslims in purpose not by ignorance, those who pretend to be Muslims but actually hate Islam, Muslims, the Prophet and don't believe in God and in the last day. They hide animosity for Muslims, waiting for the moment Muslims will fall in trouble. When the hypocrites come to you, O Muhammad, they say, we testify that you are the messenger of Allah. And Allah knows that you are his messenger. And Allah testifies that the hypocrites are liars. Quran.com 63.1 when the hypocrites, who outwardly profess Islam and inwardly conceal disbelief, come to your gathering, O Messenger, they say, We testify that you are truly the Messenger of Allah. Allah testifies that the hypocrites are lying in their claim that they testify from the depth of their hearts that you are his Messenger. They have made the oaths that they swear on their claim of faith a cover and protection for them from being killed or imprisoned. They turn people away from faith by the doubts and rumors that they spread. Evil is the hypocrisy and false oaths that they perpetrate. That is because they hypocritically professed faith, but faith did not reach their hearts, and then they secretly rejected Allah. So he put a seal on their hearts on account of their disbelief so that faith cannot enter it. Due to this seal they do not understand that in which lies their rectitude and righteousness. When you see them, their appearance and form impresses you, because of the youthfulness and luxury they possess. If they speak, you listen to their speech because of its eloquence. As if they are propped up timber in your gathering, O oh messenger. They do not understand or pay heed to anything. They think that every sound is targeting them because of their cowardice. They are truly the enemy, so be careful, O oh messenger, that they do not divulge a secret of yours or make a plot against you. May Allah curse them. How are they deluded from faith despite the clarity of its evidence and its glaring proof? These hypocrites are told. Come to the Messenger of Allah and apologize for what you've done, he will seek from Allah forgiveness for your sins, they turn their heads in mockery and jest. And you see them turning away from what they are instructed to do, whilst they are too proud to accept the truth and submit to it. It is the same whether you, O oh Messenger, seek forgiveness for their sins or you do not seek forgiveness for them. Allah will never forgive their sins. Allah does not guide those who go against his obedience and who persist in disobeying him. They are the ones who say, do not spend your wealth on those poor people who are with the messenger of Allah and the Bedouins around Medina so that they disperse away from him, the treasures of the heavens and the earth. Belong to Allah alone. He grants them to whichever servants of his he wishes. But the hypocrites do not know that the treasures of provision are in his hand, may he be glorified.
Their leader, Abdullah bin Yubay, says, If we return to Medina, the mighty, which is me and my people, will drive out the weak, which is Muhammad and his companions. To Allah alone belongs all might and to his messenger and to the believers, and not to Abdullah bin Yubay and his followers. But the hypocrites do not know that might belongs to Allah and to his messenger and to the believers. After Allah showed the keenness of the hypocrites on holding back from spending in order to prevent others from Allah's path. He warns the believers against doing the same and instructs them to spend in his path by saying, O you who have faith in Allah, and who act on what he has ordained for you, do not let your wealth nor your children distract you from the prayer or any of the other obligations of Islam. Those whose wealth and children distract them from the prayer and the other obligations that Allah has imposed on them. They are the true losers who will lose themselves and their families on the day of judgment. Spend from the wealth that Allah has provided to you before death comes to one of you and he says to his Lord. Lord, if only you would reprieve me for a short while, I would give charity for my wealth in Allah's path and I would be one of Allah's righteous servants whose actions are righteous. Allah, may he be glorified, will never reprieve a soul when its time comes and its life has ended. Allah is aware of what you do. Nothing of that is hidden from him and he will recompense you for the same, if good then with good, and if then with bad. al 1-11 it was, so that Allah may punish the hypocrite men and hypocrite women and the men and women who associate others with him and that Allah may accept repentance from the believing men and believing women. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. Quran.com 3373 The human carried it as per the decree of Allah, so that Allah could then punish the male and female hypocrites and idolaters for their hypocrisy and ascribing partners with Allah. And so that he could forgive the believing men and women who carry the burden of obligation well and Allah forgiving of the sins of his servants who repent and is merciful to them. Al-Azab, 73 And three simple kind acts of most hellfire surviving. First, which is the up front and center, is to declare that no God except Allah the creator of heavens and earth. If you did so, it means you can meet him when at least you didn't deny his existence, neither did you associate anyone with him in worship. Second, is to have at least an atom of goodness in your heart. Third, be merciful, repeatedly. Prophet Muhammad, the final messenger by God declared that being merciful is one of the shortest ways to heaven, he, peace be upon him said. The compassionate one has mercy on those who are merciful. If you show mercy to those who are on the earth, he who is in the heaven will show mercy to you. Reference, Sunan Abi Dawud. He also said. Anyone who shows mercy, even to an animal meant for slaughtering, will be shown mercy by Allah on the day of rising. Reference, Al-Adab al-Mufrad Why Islam is the accepted religion by God exclusively? One of the things I know that God had a great wisdom in letting human interfere previous scriptures, which is for everyone to refuse and start checking the last revealed book. which no human ever interfered, it's a clear message of take this one only, but. As we mentioned previously, some Muslims who claim to be Muslims aren't actually Muslims, on the other hand, some non-Muslims who claim to be non-Muslims are Muslims, how? I meet a lot of Christian convert to Islam saying, I never believe except that Jesus is a human prophet. We're saying, I always believed in the oneness of God the Creator, I never believed Jesus was Son of God. Those all are Islam signs, as Islam isn't a title as much as it is an act. But Islam is the religion of all prophets, it's an action which is submitting to the will of the Creator, worshipping Him alone, not associating any one thing with Him. There are teachings for each message God has sent to humans, each message contains on permission and forbid dance of specific things, which changes from time to another, and for God's wisdom. Islam reveals most of the things been forbidden previously. That's why following the final version of the scripture which suits humans until the last day on earth isn't an option, it's a must. Say, we have believed in Allah and in what was revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants. And in what was given to Moses and Jesus and to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and we are Muslims, submitting, to him. Quran.com 384 Say, O Messenger, that you have faith in Allah, doing as he instructs you, and that you have faith in the revelation that was given to you, and to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac and Jacob. And in what was revealed to the prophets among Jacob's descendants, and in the scriptures and miracles that were given to Moses, Jesus and all the prophets by their Lord. 
Also, say that you make no distinction between them, believing in all of them, and that you are bound to Allah alone, surrendering in devotion to Him. Ali Imran, 84